S'il vous plaît, levez-vous pour l'hymne national du Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Canada. Maintenant, mesdames et messieurs, je vous demande de rester debout pour l'hymne national français. Please stand for France's national anthem. Quad skate shot track. Uh, I am Captain Malice. Uh, joining us alongside me is Bulldog. And How are you we are doing? For the uh, third place game between Canada and France. If you are listening to the English feed, you are more than welcome to the alternate language, which obviously is in French today. Good afternoon, Bulldog. Bulldog. We are in for a treat. Yes, indeed. And first up to the line, number 1631, the cleaner for Team France against number zero, El Tanon, for Team Canada. Canada in the red, France in the blue. Both jammers neck and neck in the back getting a ferocious beating, but El Tanon moves up to the front where Francis Asselhoff almost knocks him out of bounds. That shoulder check just jettisons him out of the back instead. El Tanon is lead jammer for Team Canada. The cleaner up front uh, being held back by the rev. Dodges around the rev, gets up, and the tank, M4 for Canada, can't hold him in. Both jammers out, but El Tanon gets into the pack, only going to get one point as he calls off the jam. But Team Canada score drawing first blood. Yeah, good movement there by the Canadian jammer. Excellent work trying to get the safety from this one player and picking up that one solitary point. Uh, France really struggled early today against England and Canada struggled in the first half against America. So we are going to be into a very interesting game. Two teams who both struggled early on and they're going to try and earn back some points. Right you are, Captain Malice. And we can see the ferocity right off the line from that whistle. We've got Brad Ass fighting his way to the front. Gets around Candal Heroes of uh, Team France. Gets lead jammer Canada, two lead jammers in a row. Killian David struggling against stand aside, moves to the inside, gets around Jeff Tishborn and completes his initial pass, but Brad Ass for Team Canada already on his first scoring pass. Forced out of bounds by Kandal Heroes. 
Uh, this is looking a little bit reminiscent for France of the English game. They've really struggled to get through the pack very early on here. The Canadians putting up a very, very strong defense, settled in very nicely. That was very reminiscent of the second half of the Canadian game. That's, their walls were much stronger in that second half. Uh, in that second half as well, against USA, the actual score was, just for the second half, 90-80 uh, in favor of the USA. That's a very good score for half an hour of derby. That's right. And so, but so far, France yet to get on the scoreboard, but they have held Canada to two, to one scoring passes and a total of three points. So Canada has not been able to get their jammer through the back on a scoring pass. Well, that's down to the, uh, the strength there of the French jammer. They've been getting out very shortly after the Canadian jammers and putting that pressure on the Canadian jammers to call it earlier. As you see here, Rocket Bush fighting with Tank. But number 12, Gordon Walker for Team Canada gets lead jammer for the third time in a row. For the Canadian. Rocket, Rocket Bush gets out for Team France, but this time <laughs> Gordon Walker able to pivot around the defense, gets all the way through, calls off the jam and gets a full four points for the first time for Team Canada, bringing them to seven points. France still at zero. That's uh, the cleaner again at the jam line here for the French. He's lined up against uh, El Tanon. Uh, this uh, is a three on three block. So it's a bit of penalties already, nice and early. Looks like, looks like, yeah, Tishman there trying to bookend. Uh, I believe that is Hasselhoff on the outside edge. Indeed. Yeah. He wasn't too happy about that, but he stepped around behind, sorry. This one no longer an issue as El Tano finds the space, bulls past, indeed bull past Hasselhoff and makes his way out of the pack to lead jammer. Yes, this is a rematch from the very first jam, the cleaner, number 1631. Oh, narrowly avoids it, cutting the track. Jeff Tishborn, number 66 of Team Canada, went and did a clockwise block, and that allowed the cleaner to come back in, but he doesn't get around in time. El Tenon calling off the jam, but does not score any points. France with a tremendous defense so far. Yeah, stand aside, uh, a bit confused. He thought he'd caught, uh, sorry, forced a cut, but unfortunately, you see the referee was uh, no pass, no he'd already passed stand aside at that stage. There's no cut there. Sorry, but uh, France, in spite of uh, giving up lead jammer every single jam so far, has nevertheless held firm in the pack on the scoring passes, keeping Canada to a minimum of scoring. And actually, even though even though Elton had about 30 straight the pack any distance, France held firm. Imaginable line, if you will. It's very impressive here. The French. Uh much stronger or appearing much stronger now than they did earlier against the English. They've been able to, they may lose the lead jammer status, but they reform very well and they make it an incredibly difficult job for the Canadian jammers. Uh, gonna probably sap the will here very quickly of, of all the jammers. It's gonna be a question not of skill, I think, but staying power today. That's right. Well, uh, team, what Team France needs to get their jammer out first, one of these jams, or else their morale is gonna begin to start sinking if, if this shutout continues. Mr. Furio, oh sorry, and Kill Killian David is yes. uh, quite a, um, I want to say, not emotional skater, but he plays a lot more on his feelings. And when he starts to, to really struggle, it, it shows and he tends to not really be able to bounce back too quickly from that. I'm he, hoping here, for my own personal sake, that he gets a nice good burst here and that gets his head in his game. He has no shame showing exactly what his passions are, where, what, is, what he's feeling at any given moment. You can see it written all over his face. But Killian David gets under the shoulder of Dirty Sanchez of Team Canada. Team France getting lead jammer for the very first time. But Brad Ass, number F22, just about a quarter lap behind Killian David as Killian David gets past Brandon McCracken, stopped by Dirty Sanchez, calls off the jam, gets three out of a potential four points. Brad Ass not able to pass any of the French skaters, so a three to zero jam for Team France. Uh, it's good for France to get on the score sheet. Quick update there. Uh, the French captain slash Gordon F22 left the box early, and we had actually some extra minute in the box from the procedure. That was the uh, little bit of issue that occurred there the, just before that last jam. Uh, Canada here at a two on three block at disadvantage, and the French going to try and capitalize. Forced error against the against Team France, but Rocket Bush, number 129, forces his way straight up the center, gets out of the pack. But number 403, Ro Rice Ball. I wanted to say Rocket Ball because uh, he's going really fast. But Rice Ball closing the gap with Rocket Bush. That may also be why I wanted to say Rocket Ball. <laughs> but Rocket Bush moving against a very fast-moving pack. Wow. Gets past Gordon Walker, but Stand Aside is up front. I believe that's going to be a three-point so far for Rocket Bush because he's got a couple of ghost points. 
Rice ball getting into the pack as well. Is going to score some points. Yes, there it is. Three points for uh, Canada, but three points for Team France, including those ghost points. That was very impressive. That display of speed from all those skaters. Rice ball, quite a short, stocky skater, got low and got that deep, deep under push strike. Got some real nice speed there. Yeah, and he was able to narrow the distance. Uh, Rocket Bush got out about a quarter lap behind, but he was yep. only about an eighth of a lap behind. Right, just hot right. on his heels. Rice ball, that is, uh, yep. was hot on Rocket Bush's heels as he entered the pack. But the cleaner sneaks up the inside lane, gets around Stephen Magic Johnson at red five for Team Canada, and gets lead jammer for France again. So now France on the streak of lead jammer. Elton on number zero gets forced out of bounds by Maya Janus of Team France and has to recycle all the way back to turn two. The cleaner on a scoring pass now potentially five points on this pass runs into Jeff Tishborn number 66 who goes to the penalty box and that allows the cleaner to get past Stephen Magic Johnson number 14A of Team Canada completing the pass for five for Team France. The cleaner there calling that jam even though Elton on was still on his initial pass. I think he was more aware of the possibility that Canada was out than they, uh, where they actually were. I think they, uh, the Canadian jam has been pressed very early here, and I think it's it overly cautious. <laughs> right, you are. <laughs> and it looks like Brad Ass, number F22, starting behind the jammer line, taking a running start. Gillian David starting on the jammer line. Now it's trying to squeeze between Stand Aside and Dirty Sanchez, but gets knocked down in turn one. Brad Ass of Team Canada escaping Ooh. around the outside of three French blockers, J Big Jim Candeleros and Spider Biscot, and gets lead jammer for Team Canada. First time in about three jams. I think France had three lead jammers in a row. So Canada now reclaiming that status. Now on a scoring pass as Killian David, or sorry, Killian David. Can you save? <laughs> Killian David. I keep, I'm. I'm used to saying it in English yep. or in Spanish. It's and the, Fr so the, the French it's is the David. simplest it's of all. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having trouble with that. We had a crash course in French from both Braveheart and G.I. Jones. Uh, we've been learning here today. David. David. And I'm, I'm probably still butchering nope, it that, anyway. That's about right. We're okay there. <laughs> uh, here's, here's a chance for the Canadians really to uh, exploit this power jam. They're going to throw it, I think. I can't see if he stood behind Slash Gordon right now. Have you got an eye? I think it's, it's not Brad Ass. I can't see who it is. There's two well, it, the way. it is a power jam. It's That's Walker. number 12, Gordon it's Walker. For oh. Team Canada, forced out of bounds by a shoulder from Angry Bear. Angry Bear really looking solid today. Great work from the French blocker. Four wall from the French. Scare and X catches Gordon Walker just as he's about to escape and holds him in and forces him out of bounds. He has to recycle just a bit behind Slash Gordon. Slash Gordon picking him up and Angry Bear finishing him off, sending him out of bounds. And that means Gordon Walker has to recycle all the way back behind his, his safety wall from his teammates. But again, forced out of bounds this time on the inside. Comes back in, tries to get between Angry Bear and Slash Gordon, goes up the inside. Oh, almost caught again by Scare NX, but this time escapes. But Fr Team France has sapped the penalty time off of Killian David, so this power jam will not last very much longer. Now on his first scoring pass, this time getting through with uh, very easily compared to the last time. Five points, a grand slam for Brad Ass of Team Canada as Killian David rejoins the pack. Immediately sternum check from the M4 tank of Team Canada, not knocking him down, picks himself back up. He is getting battered as Killian David, number 13 of Team France, just get, having to pay the price every single time he enters into the pack, and he's, he's rebuffed every single time. But M4 tank drops down, but Jeff Tishborn is there to clean house on the French jammer. Killian David lo looking a little slower, picking himself up this time, but he's still nimble on his feet, straight up the center, gets picked up by Brandon McCracken, but a quick juke to the inside, and Killian David is through. Bra uh, Gordon Walker, Gordon Walker does a pivot to the outside and steals two from Team France. I think this is a, a bad sign of things to come here for the Canadians. They, they picked up a lot of penalties, a lot of silly penalties they didn't need to pick up in that jam. Uh, there was a low block call on Tank, on Killian David on the straightaway, and an out of play call on T uh, not, yeah, Tishborn, who's now having to remain on track and owing the penalty box one minute. This, is, uh, this could be quite dangerous. So the French jammers are going to be very, very adept at abusing smaller walls. As we see, I think it's Rocket Bush here. 
Yeah, it looks like Rocky Bush to me. And El Tanon, number zero. That was a three scoring passes from Brandon, uh, Brandon Walker. A five, a four, and a two for a total of, sorry, a three, and for a total of 12 points. Oh, excuse me, two fives and a two for a total of 12 points for Team Canada. So 26 to 11 right now in favor of Team Canada. Rocket Bush coming in on a scoring pass, but the jam gets called off by El Tanon. He picks up two more for Canada. Red five stepping up to jam for Team Canada red in the five. red. Yep. He's got three French blockers to pass there as it looks like the clean has only got Dirty Sanchez to make his way past. Dirty Sanchez doing a fantastic job though there on the outside edge of corner one. Red five at the front dodges past Candeleros. A deft move straight up the center. Gets lead jammer for Team Canada. The cleaner of Team France finally battering his way past Dirty Sanchez to complete his initial pass. But here's Red 5 of Canada on a scoring pass. Runs into Candaleros on the inside. Gets rebuffed and calls off the jam. Two points Canada. Uh, looks like the uh, the French, when they have a full or a near full contingent of blockers, are more than capable of holding off and slowing down the Canadians, but when it's the penalties, as always, it's always the penalties. They're going to hurt any team. When the Canadians and the French have fewer blockers on track, they really start to struggle. We're going to see here Furio again, and... People expect big things from Fury, sorry, of Killian Devi. He's uh, such a, a fantastic skater. He really struggled against Team England. I think he's really going to struggle against the, uh, the Canadians for their strength and their agility. But I, I think there's a lot of pressure on the young man here. Absolutely. He has a, a sterling reputation in the sport and also just absolutely incredible agility. But it, I think the, te the teams are beginning to, to figure out how to, how to solve the puzzle of Monsieur Fiorio, uh, Killian De David. And he tries to get through again, but stand aside, catches him on the outside. We have 22, Brad Ass on a scoring pass now. He's already got Lee Jammer. Stumbles over Maya Janus of Team France. Uh, Skaranex is rather the... Uh, oh, Skaranex, yes. Maya Janus has the uh, goatee. And the Skaranex has the full beard. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's 1-0 to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, a line there coming in from the Canadian bench. He's not happy. He was shouting at the officials. Couldn't hear the call from over here, though. Uh, rocket bush on the jammer line and this time it's the blocker advantage in favor of the canadians as they stretch out this lead by 24 points canada on 35 france on 11. gordon walker number 12 jamming once again for team canada against rocket bush number 129 for team france gordon walker picked up by a two wall it's the no, monkey business the monkey business and hasselhoff they can't hold him in gordon walker is lead jammer and the rocket bush getting a back block penalty Going to the penalty box, it is a power jam for Team Canada. Gordon Walker on his first scoring pass, immediately picked up by Monkey Business and rebuffed by Asselhoff, but a spin around the outside, and he is free. Grand slam for Team Canada. Now the, uh, the French there, unfortunately, did the worst thing at the worst possible time and split up to try and go what's going on and left enough space for Brad to get past the first French blocker in Aslov and split up and attack and get that pass. We currently have here uh, 1,910 viewers on the English feed. Hello to you and 99 viewers listening to this language feed in French. Good afternoon here at the Quad Skate Shop track. This is the third scoring pass on a power jam for Team Canada. Gordon Walker, number 12, with the star. Running behind a four wall of Team France. Monkey Business, Angry Bear, X-Wing, and Asselhoff of Team France. Solid four wall. The Rev moved in to break it up, but Gordon Walker now up front against a three wall. X-Wing comes up. That's all. That makes it all four of the French blockers, and they hold firm. Gordon Walker's not going to get finished his third scoring pass, only going to get four out of a top possible five for 14 total in this jam, Team Canada. City, 
So we're over here on the Quad Skate Shop. This track is sponsored by Quad Skate Shop, Europe's original brick and mortar roller derby equipment supplier. Quad Roller Skate Shop has the best selection and most stock of any store on the continent. With excellent consultation services only a fellow skater could provide, we've got all your needs covered. We love this game, say Quad Skate Shop. <laughs> And this is the first of uh, three timeouts allowed for Team France. So probably trying to, to get their heads on straight, see if they can find a, find a formula that will uh, that will slow down, if not stop, Team Canada. Well, that's the thing that you, 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 sorry, you use your team timeouts for here. The French obviously had a very tough game against the English. Uh, it was a really, really grueling physical game for them. Uh, they've come out and they're facing the French, sorry, the Canadians, and the Canadians again give them a very, very stern test. And you need those 30 seconds, a minute, just to set down and go, right, what's working, what isn't, let's change up. And let's yeah. see what this uh, timeout changes for Team France here. Yeah, but any time that the French go against the Brits, I think there is always a <laughs> lot of passion involved. Uh, that's a very... <laughs> long-standing rivalry I think. <laughs> I think we're talking over a thousand years worth of <laughs> something like that yeah that sounds about right El Tanon with a moving backwards against Spider Biscott and finally gets free that was a good effort by Spider Biscott but El Tanon showing some uh, showing some interesting technique there gets into the pack and again backs up spins as he calls off the jam ricocheting out of bounds one point for Team Canada. Canada Hero, fantastic hip check there on the outside of the apex. Put his hip into Earl Tunnel and he bounced him off the track, forcing the call off. Fantastic work there by the French blocker. Really, really impressive. Very impressive early today, very continuing that streak. Looking forward to seeing more of as this game goes on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that Team Canada has gotten a lot more, gotten into a lot more scoring passes, but so many times the French have held us, held the can Team Canada to only one or two points. So showing a strong defense, even though they are uh, they are losing in the lead jammer count. Stand aside, a fresh jammer for Team Canada. I believe after no, that's Red Five, Red, red five. five, number five uh, for Team Canada. The cleaner here really He's, struggling with the front there. This is his second time jamming, but the cleaner, yes, up front against Jeff Tishborn and Calvin Ziegler, number 22 of Team Canada. And the, the cleaner really leaning in, and Calvin Ziegler and Jeff Tishborn, the, uh, uh, just a solid wall of, the, of maple syrup. You know? <laughs> and bacon, no doubt. Plenty of bacon and there. bacon. So you didn't think that that was such a, so it had so much structure to it, but it does, and they're showing it right now. Because, uh, uh, you know, because people from Canada, that's, they're mostly made of maple syrup and bacon, if I'm not mistaken. I heard that once. Uh, and, and, and hockey. That's, that's and, <laughs> hockey sticks and, that's and, right. and, and uh, stick tape. Yeah, that's, it. <laughs> and, that's right. Okay, we should just leave that one alone yeah. and pretend it never happened. <laughs> Red five at the back of the Still pack. Still struggling. Indeed. On a scoring pass. Look. Looks like Asselhoff going to the penalty oh. box for Team France. That means they're down a blocker. And the cleaner stumbling over to Jeff, Tish, or actually the other way around, actually. Jeff Tishborn falling down, narrowly avoiding tripping over the cleaner. The cleaner getting a grand slam against Team Canada. Red five is not going to get, no, that was not a scoring pass. He gets zero points. So France winning the jam five to zero. A uh, fantastic display of strength there from Red Five. He ruled, he fought for every inch, gets out of the pack, comes in, powerful hit, comes sliding, and he holds up, stands strong, skates out of the pack, getting out there, forcing the call off. From Twitter, Daisy Boo Cannon. Kirk Jammett is my favorite referee name of the tournament. Kirk Jammett is a fantastic referee name. He's, uh, I believe, he's one of the OPRs here today. I can't see, yeah, I can think of him down there. Yeah. I've not picked my favorite yet. There are too many. 11 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the game. Killian David running into a two wall. Dirty Sanchez and stand aside, but he spins to the inside and gets out. But Brad Ass already lead jammer for Team Canada. Dodges around Maya Yanus. It was Maya Yanus this time, by the way. But gets knocked to the outside, calls off the jam from the floor. So gets three points. Killian David getting into the pack, but does not pick up any points. The, team, the French cheer section did not like that call. Well, I think that the fact that they thought the hips had passed, but quite clearly the, the Canadian blocker got him with the outside edge of his, his cheek, shall we say, before the hips had been passed. So it was a very, very good call. 
And but from the the French fans' angle, they couldn't really see that. We have a slightly better angle here. I'm not going to ask you to clarify the word cheek for us. We've got <laughs> Rocket Bush number 129 ramming into a three wall of Canada and breaks through. Tank can't hold on, but he gets picked up again by Jeff Tishborn and Magic Johnson knocked out of bounds and moves has to recycle there's gordon walker number 12 for team canada as lead jammer now hits the pack it's around charles martel number 717 of team canada actually runs into his own teammate by accident rocket bush of team france getting out of the pack but not going to get around gordon walker calls it off for four i still think uh, i was still I was, I was commentating on the england france game and throughout the entirety of that i was saying that the french need to assist their jammers more and that's a lesson they've not learned their, their jammers are still struggling and i think they need to up the aggression on the canadians and start breaking apart those walls they would skate they would work they would perform so much better if they listened to everything we said i know <laughs> We can see it from the wonderful hey, angle. That's we, we know everything that's yeah. going on, and we know exactly. We always know exactly what they need to do. If only they would listen to us. But uh. Uh, <laughs> the clean. <laughs> that's not true at that's all. No. But we like to think that it is. Number 1631, the cleaner for Team France, has lead jammer. France has had a drought of lead jammers, but this time the cleaner gets in. He's looking for two, and he gets it. Two points for Team France and shutting out Team Canada on this jam. Altanon really uh, struggled to get through the French pack there. He got up though and couldn't keep pace anywhere near as fast as Klikina whipped around that pack, uh, which uh, unfortunately allowed France to pick up a couple more points from a Canadian respect, of course. From the French, is fantastically the French pick up a few more points. <laughs> and you know, I, I just I just realized I don't think Killian David, uh, the the prolific point scorer, the prolific jammer for Team France, I don't think I'm not sure if he's scored a single point in this game. I, I may be wrong, and I'm sure someone on Twitter will correct, will correct me yeah. if I'm uh, if I'm wrong. They were, they're not shy. No, no, I've already been corrected once. In 140 characters, not shy at all. You can't afford to be shy with that kind of budget. Nope. But uh, he gets Lee Jemery, so he's almost he certain to see. score this time. Uh, so as soon as it comes out of my mouth, I'm a liar. <laughs> Here he goes. But he nope. comes up short. Nothing. He bounces off of a hip check. I believe that was from uh, Calvin Ziegler, mm. who stopped him in his tracks. He gets no points, but there is, it looks like there is an official review requested. I would guess it's from Team France, but it is. Uh, we'll Slash Gordon came running in for that while mm -hmm. skating in. It was the the small play by the Canadians. What they did as they saw him coming is they had a three wall, plenty of spaces. They saw where Fury was approaching, and they saw he did uh, his usual quick transition 180, and they just got together very hard and kept their hips in a firm line. Did not allow Fury to find a gap to pass a hip, and that's why they started getting points. And that's the kind of stuff that's going to get under his skin very quickly. He's going to start to worry that he can't score points and he's going to start having that head go away and it's going to score some problems. I mean, from a neutral perspective, I want to see Killing the V scoring as many points as possible because when he starts scoring points, games start getting very, very exciting here. And also, did, did you notice how the skaters on the track love to make liars out of us? As soon as I said he <laughs> scored no points, then he immediately got into an almost certain scoring position. Yep. And as soon as I said that... He didn't score. He didn't score. You jinxed him. <laughs> Hold on, that's, that's all on you, man. It's not that. It's that, he, it's that somehow they sense what I'm saying, and, it, and their goal throughout the game is to make whatever I said... Any, even the smallest prediction mm. or the, the statement of the past, they wanted to make it false and, <laughs> and flip it on me. <laughs> it's a personal vendetta, I tell you. Oh, it's definitely something along those lines. <laughs> and if you're sat at home enjoying listening to this feed, if you could donate any money whatsoever to uh, us, we would very much appreciate the donate link at the top of the broadcast page. Uh, any money you do donate, uh, pounds, dollars, euros, yen, uh, I would say franc, but that's not even, this is still the euro. Uh, it's split evenly between tournament running costs and the travel funds of the team. And uh, it's really, if it's put on further events like this, such as the World Cup and the Men's European Championships, uh, it, it does unfortunately cost money. So anything you can donate would be greatly appreciated by us. Feel free to drop in. And if you do donate, feel free to get us on Twitter on hashtag MRDWC. We are over here on the hashtag MRDWC QSS track. Feel free to tweet us with anything at all, or even send us pictures on Instagram. We're all about the social media this weekend. We, uh, look us up on Instagram under MRDWC. Chef for yourself enjoying the cup wherever you are, and they might even make it here onto the stream. 
Looks like this official review is still ongoing. We have the lovely Welsh referee Trey Cruel to my left. He's writing down exactly what's happening. He's going to shove it under my nose in a minute. And I'm going to let you know what's going on. Okay. Uh, blue skater on the floor, red drummer on the floor, blue skater down to the ground. Looking for a misconduct for blocking a down opponent. The contact was made to a down skater, but no force, so there has been no call made here. All right, so they're calling no fault on that. It was it was a natural or un, uh, something that could not be avoided, uh, and they're basically no calling no penalty. Yes, or no fault. More yeah. important, uh, of course, Slash Gordon believes there was impact oh, yeah. <laughs> technically, but uh, the referees are saying there was no fault, yeah. and therefore no penalty uh, in this particular case. Yeah. Gordon Walker, number 12, getting into the pack, calling off the jam as he spins around the lead, the last line of defense for Team France, 4-0 to zero Canada. That brings the score to 61 for Canada, 18 for France, with just under eight minutes remaining in the first period. The French still struggling to get out of the pack first, and when they do get out of the pack, to get into a scoring position. Uh, it appears to be the Canadians just have this slight edge at the moment, but like the earlier game on the RDC track, it's a very low scoring game. We have like seven minutes left of the clock and not even 80 points scored yet by both teams combined. That's right. Now we got a three on three pack. Team Canada fielding in the red, fielding number zero, El Tanon. And uh, the cleaner, number 1631, in for Team France in the blue. But El Tanon picks up lead. Jammer, the cleaner, cleaned, gets his clock cleaned <laughs> by Rice Ball, who draws him back. But a low block called on Rice Ball. But the cleaner already recycled back behind the rev. And Calvin Ziegler dodges to the outside. Home urgency, but gets cleaned out again. This time by Calvin Ziegler but recovers incredibly quickly. I didn't, I barely even saw it. It was a blur recovering, gets around the rev and home emergency very quickly this time. But El Tenon on a scoring pass, in control of the clock, uh, uses that control, calls off the jam. Two more points and uh, was that, I believe that was his second scoring pass, so a total of seven. He gets a grand slam on the first. He does indeed. Uh, Rice ball there as he went, uh, uh, sorry, as he went past the cleaner to try and take him down, he went down hard and the skate clipped uh, the cleaner's skate as he was striding, trying to take the inside line, took him down there. It's one of those ones why we have to force more the skaters. The uh, Canadians now going to have to struggle with a three wall against the very, very skilled Killian David, and who gets lead jammer. And let's see if he'll make another liar out of you. And the, <laughs> I'm not going to make any predictions <laughs> on what's going to happen in the next 10 seconds. But uh, we, now we're seeing the Killian David that we're used to seeing. This uh, this incredible agility. Would you believe he's been skating for three years? Now, when you're in, this is this is classic Monsieur Furio. Yeah, that's. I mean, I didn't even want to talk over it. You can just enjoy it at home. But that's a quick grand slam. There goes Red Five for Team Canada, getting out of the back, completing his initial pass. Killian David this time running into a two wall, steps around the outside of stand aside and Jeff Tishborn to complete his second scoring pass. That's out of four points. And there it is. There's yeah, there it is. Smile. There we go. That's that, it. He's now. He's got the points he needed to start getting. He's into the game now. Mm -hmm. We'll see a better Mr. Fury, Mr. Better Gillian Levy as this game goes on. He's now got on the board, and he's he's an emotional player. He's going to play on that emotion. One thing I've noticed, I've, I've I announced the French England game, as I keep mentioning. There seems to be a very clear distinction in the top four teams here: England, France, uh, Canada, USA. Their defense is very very resolute the other teams they're scoring big points their jammers are fantastic but their, their defense isn't able to stop opposition teams scoring as much and i think that's the difference within that top four that gulf of class and defense is where the game's going and the defense wins games well this is it it's, it's great to, to score hundreds of points but uh, you need to work that defense you need to stop your opposition scoring points just as much as we're joined here at the announce track by the lovely G.I. Jones in his sparkly hot pants. And his maple syrup. He gave, he gave me actual, honest to God, Canadian maple syrup. I've never had that before. It was on my breakfast this morning, thanks to the, uh, the lovely Canadian photographer. Who's, who's. Yeah, that's good. So we, we, have, we have maple syrup in the States, but uh, Canada, they, they, they put more love into it. I yeah. think I tasted the love. I definitely did. Yep. You know, these little medicine bottles you've been sharing them out in. <laughs> uh, it's the, it's the nice touches like this I like about this game. 
It's the people who have that community spirit. We are in an official timeout. Uh, referees are consulting. I don't think it's an official timeout. I'm uh, uh, sorry, an official review. No. A uh, big shout out on Twitter from Tinkerbell333. As far as it Tinkerbell? Terrible handwriting. I don't see. I don't see an R, so it's a Tinkerbell. Tinky Bell. Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. He's not rewriting it for us, but he's basically. There's a big fan on Twitter shouting from <laughs> Let's Go Team Canada. Uh, <laughs> and apologize it, for any spelling errors it could be from our producer. T-I-N-G-E. <laughs> that, that, is that a W or it a could be N? W. And it's either an H or a K. <laughs> it is. It's Tinky Bell. <laughs> <laughs> He's very angly rewritten as far as. Uh, our current scores on the other game on the RDC track. Australia on 90, Wales on 84. That's very, very close. It's up for the plate. Well, I am seeing the team captain slash Gordon and, uh, and uh, Coach the Lime are up in the uh, on the infield line, watching w intently the discussion going on with the referees at the center. Well, whenever there's a big zebra huddle like that in the middle, it usually has ramifications for the teams. Uh, we've got Jam Time and McGeek stood at the GB EMS pivot line. GB EMS are the only UK RDA endorsed medical team, and this next jam after this official review will be brought to you by them. And the clock frozen at 5 minutes 6 seconds in the first period. Canada at 68 points, France at 27 points. And this goes back to what I was saying before about defense. These games are very low scoring. It's that uh, up in uh, the strength of the walls and their ability to, I think, match the jammer's agility has been paramount in the impressive nature of the defensive displays so far this afternoon and this morning. We are uh, going to be waiting on the, re the results of this official review as Fu Man Drew, head ref here today, is instructing Slash Gordon, Alime, and O's, a red vaulter. All right, we do have our uh, announcer referee taking notes, so hopefully we'll have more information on you, but uh, the skaters look very, uh, they are anticipating a start very soon. And it looks like anyone's gone to the box here, so it looks like no penalty has been given. I think they're anxious to start right now, the skaters. Uh, we have uh, Sorocket Bush, number 129, jamming for Team France in the blue against F-22 Brad Ass in the red for Team Canada. Rocket Bush rocketing around Dirty Sanchez, number 13, 13 of Canada, claims lead jammer for France. Brad Ass bounces off a shoulder check from Big Jim and then is forced out of bounds by X-Wing, still at the back of the pack as Rocket Bush of Team France moves through the pack, slaloms his way to the front, gets out of the pack, calls off the jam, a grand slam for Team France, brings him to 32 points to Canada's 68. I think exactly what happened with the cleaner early today, calling that jam whilst the opposite was slowing his initial pass happened there. I think the French are very, very wary of the, the danger the Canadian jammers pose. They don't want to risk a lower differential for more points on the board. Wise move, really. Very cautious, but a very smart move. A lot of inexperienced teams go for the big score as opposed to the big, the decent differential. That's right. Now, and of course, many of these men on Team France are from the Toulouse Roller Derby, Toulouse who, are, who dogs, were yeah. the men's European Roller Derby champions this uh, last year, technically, 2013. And there is the cleaner, a member of that team, dodges around Magic Johnson and gets lead jammer for Team France. Slash Gordon slowing down. Gordon Walker and then a big du or double shoulder check from Maya Yanus followed by Slash Gordon into Gordon Walker, but he brushes them off. <laughs> those were some vicious hits from both of those skaters, but Gordon Walker just powers through. That was a brutal one-two punch from mm -hmm. Maya Yanus and, and Slash Gordon. As a skater myself, I would not want to receive those. But he does. Uh, but he does not get around to any any points. Four points picked up by Rocket Bush. 
No, yeah. sorry, the, the cleaner. Four points picked up by the cleaner for France, mm -hmm. bringing them to 36 points. Quick clarification on that, a very long official review there. There was a question on whether the uh, red jammer had caused a back block uh, on the blue blocker. Uh, no call given us, but it was deemed the contact did not cause the fall. And uh, obviously from the jammer not going to the penalty box, the the uh, official review, the call, the no call stood, as yeah. they say. El Tenon the, is lead jammer for Team Canada. Killian David, number 13 for Team France, still in the pack. It's knocked to the inside by Jeff Tishborn. As El Tenon completes a scoring pass around Monkey Business and Charles Martel, to get five points, a grand slam for Team Canada. Killian David knocked down and gets a back block penalty. That means it's a power jam for Team Canada. I believe only the second power jam in the game, both of which have gone to Team Canada. Yep. And Elton is not a jammer you want to give a power jam to. The big, big Canadian is a powerful pusher and a very, very fast skater and surprisingly agile for his size. And he's going to make the most of this here as he pushes against a very, very strong three wall. And this is, is, is somewhat fortunate for Team Canada. They're down to two blockers right now, whereas France it has all four blockers on the track. So El, El Tenon would be moving uphill if he had to fend off another jammer, or rather if uh, you know, the Team Canada blockers <laughs> would have been shorthanded going against Killian David, which is something you never want to do against that a jammer with that kind of skill. Yeah, his feet do dance around the track very, very quickly. He does not need much space at all. It's a little unfortunate. I think he lost his footing there as he went into the back of I think it was, I think it was 66 Tishmore he went into the back of. But Elton not converting the Dickens out of this jam. Already up to five scoring passes, 25 points so far for Team Canada. As Killian David finally comes out of the pack, but that was a tremendous power jam for Team Canada. El Tenon knocking Killian David out of bounds and tries to soul crush him, but they actually run out of time. But he doesn't get any points on that last scoring jam, but a 20, he'll settle for a 25 to zero jam. Yeah, that's, that's the danger that comes with power jams with, with a jammer of El Tenon's massive quality there. I, I think, personally, I think the, the French aren't used to the physicality that the Canadian jammers bring. I mean, they, they've just played against the English jammers who are much more agile and uh, dancey jammers. And the Canadians, not so much guile, more about punching their way through with their shoulders. And uh, looking through the resumes of a lot of these skaters uh, for Team Canada, a lot of hockey. Hockey is mentioned a lot in their backgrounds, and that gives them a, <laughs> that may give them somewhat of a physical edge just from experience, used to that kind of, that kind of get, knocking around, being knocked on and knocking others around. But Rocket Bush, Bouncing off of a hip check from home emergency, gets through the pack, and four points for Team Canada with only a couple of seconds on the clock. Looking for a time. Yes, Ca Team Canada calls a timeout. We will have another jam in the, in period one. Yeah, this looks like it's. I reckon it's probably going to be on the call on the right corner. Quickly, uh, a couple of things we've seen here. We got a Canada here on 93 points, France on 40. Much better there from the French as they got out of the pack nice and early, took lead and got four points nice and clean. Uh, very important for them to continue to do similarly to that, getting out of the pack clean. Uh, the difficulty they're having is the Canadian blockers are very, very strong and very well, sorry, working well, very together as a unit. And that's really where the difference is because the French block is getting split apart a bit easier than the Canadians. And that's really hurting them as this game goes on. I think we're looking here for the results of the official review. We'll be obviously waiting for our announcer ref to come out to us with the necessary information. Uh, timeout was called by Lime and I believe an official review was asked for it as well. Just waiting to see the results. And by the way, if you're wondering why we're not reporting on who's in the penalty box, that is because we are having just a slightly unfortunate angle. We cannot see the penalty box from where we're sitting, so we have to do some dead reckoning <laughs> from the rosters to, to figure out who is in the penalty box or just wait for them to come out. Yeah, I, I, we can call them when they go in, we can call them when we go out, but we have a pack of big Canadians between us and the penalty box. We've got no idea what's going on there. Big it being the operative word. Mm. This is the size, you can you can actually see the size difference. On, well, basically these Canadians, most of them are, are I think, 
Six foot plus. Clearing six foot. Oh, easy. <laughs> uh, Brad Ass and Rice Bull are pretty much the only two. That's probably genetic, though, being the father-son combo. Mm -hmm. uh, whilst we were waiting here for the end of this official timeout, we'd like to thank uh, Fast Girl Skates. Fast Girl Skates, their nodule staff reps in all facets of the Royal Derby, uh, WFTDA, UC, USARS, MRDA, JRDA, and Bank. They can relate and have what you need. Largest selection on skates and gear for everyone, women, men, juniors. It's about you. That's Fast Girl Skates. Big thank you to their one of our sponsors here this weekend. Probably seen their ads in between the uh, the feed here today. Do like their ad? I wish we had a shop that size nearby here, but not quite yet. Soon though. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, the full disclosure, uh, yeah, fast, fast girl skates. Uh, Jen and Sarah are good friends of mine, and that, but I absolutely love going there. Even if you don't want to, even if it's not that. It, I would encourage you to do that. But even if you didn't or didn't want to buy anything, if you just if you just went by the shop, Sarah and Jen always happy to talk about all things roller derby and all things skates. And you know, they do, they give it that personal touch. But of course, they are also available online. But well, so things like that personal touch that are really great about a brick and mortar store. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, uh, it's one of those things. I mean, it's great shopping things online. But the the uh, brilliant for me here this weekend that all these shops and stores and I can try gear on that I don't get to try on otherwise. And it's nice to get an idea of what's out there. You know, what I may want to buy when I get paid and all those lovely things. <laughs> it's just a bit. I always have too much month at the end of my paycheck. <laughs> Can you repeat that? <laughs> Did you say you have too much at month, the end of the month? At the end of my paycheck. <laughs> oh, you poor guy. Oh, that's a terrible problem. Uh, you know, I can probably help you out with that. If you <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who would love to help you out with that horrible affliction. Oh, uh, this is what happens. I, if we move to a much shorter month and a much bigger paycheck, I think we'd be okay. If only I could make less money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So we're still waiting for the official timeout here. I think there's clarification going on here with and the penalty box. I'm still unsure of what's going on. We had uh, Trey Krull roll over and say that there's nothing really to worry about, but this is still ongoing as over on the RDC track, Australia and Wales are drawing at 124 apiece. There are no draws in roller derby, so I definitely want to end that way, but that's definitely up to one, two, four each. Oop. Looks like this has changed, maybe. With 16 minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, that's definitely not ending that way. It's interesting that the Welsh have pulled that back. They were about 20, 30 points behind earlier on, and they're dragging that one back. Good to see there by the local boys. You all, I'm, I'm still unsure why we're, what we're waiting for here. All right, it looks, like, it looks like the clock is being adjusted. I'm, I'm watching the clock tick down very quickly. Now it's just dipping below a minute right now, but the, it should be only about three or four seconds. Yeah, there's not much left so. this half. Hopefully it's there. Two seconds. Two seconds. Hey, all right. <laughs> I think. <laughs> and here, Hansel Joe Hansel, happy that the clock. I think it's one of those ones that has to be manually adjusted. You can't just like type the number and you have to take it down the seconds. And I, th I think that's what we were waiting for was the clock, them to reset the clock because it had already gone past, uh, the pa it had already expired and they had to readjust it. But now we are back in the action. The final jam, the period clock has officially expired with Gordon Walker, number 12, slamming his shoulder into Slash Gordon and gets an elbow call. And he's going to the penalty box. It's going to be a power jam for the cleaner who has one defender. That's Sir Dirty Sanchez who drives his shoulder into the sternum but it fails to stop the cleaner who gets lead jammer for Team France. Team France really need this lead, this power jam here to go really well. They are hurting for points here and they need the clean to pick as many as possible. If they can have a jam like El Tanon had earlier and get pick up 25, he's really good for them. Now, I may, I may be mistaken, but I believe this is the first power jam that Team France has, uh, has been given by Team Canada. With Chef Tishborn, a stalwart defense, he 
forcing the cleaner to drive for every single inch, but finally the cleaner gets through. First Grand Slam. Now, if you remember, El Tenon got 25 points on his Grand and in a, in a power jam just about three jams ago. So that's kind of what the cleaner has to measure up to if they want to finish, if France wants to finish this jam, sorry, this period strong. The cleaner has, gets knocked out of bounds though, recycles. Now moves up the inside, skips past Jeff Tishborn, only to get caught by Dirty Sanchez. And now Jeff Tishborn using Tur Dirty Sanchez as a cudgel and forces the cleaner out of bounds. He is on his stomach, on the ground, calls off the jam, and that is the end of the first period. Lovely show of respect there from Jeff Tishborn to the cleaner. Give him a lovely uh, high five and a hug there after those big pair of heads that to uh, knock the cleaner down. That was a lovely little display of sportsmanship there. That was a nine-point power jam for Team France. Of course, they will technically start the next jam in a power jam situation, but the score, 49 for Canada for France, 93 uh, for Canada. Just moving. to correct you, though, but, uh, the French, sorry, the Canadian jammer did just get out of the uh, penalty box and make it onto the track, so it won't be starting on a power jam, I'm afraid. Like I said, we can't actually see the penalty box where we are, but we're going to throw you to ha commercials for halftime and come back in a few minutes. Thank you.